What's up everybody and welcome back to another video from the Scalar Learning Channel on SAT Math and today we are doing another mini test from Khan Academy which they are pretty amazing and really helpful for prepping for this SAT. And by the way if you see up here we've got a posting up in the upper corner it says click link in the description below to sign up for Scalar Learning's epic SAT Math video course. That's because our video course is live. It's amazing. It's got four practice tests that we've cultivated specifically for the math section they're awesome they're amazing so check it out and you like i said you can click on the link below and it's month to month so you can sign up for as long or as short as you want sign up for one month cancel sign up for two months if you want to keep hitting it and the best news is we keep adding to it so it's going to keep growing and getting better and better so make sure to do that especially if you're prepping for this upcoming march sat without further ado let's do it boom in night vision goggles, light rays cause electrons to be projected from a metal surface. The above equation relates connect energy to the volts EV uh, of emitted electrons, frequency of V and Hertz and function. In a particular set of night vision goggles, electrons emitted must have a kinetic energy of at least the electrons emitted. So, electrons. The electrons emitted must have energy of at least 2.46 e volts okay and can make energy in electron volts k of emit so the k has to be at least 2.46 if the frequency of incoming light ray is less than blah 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 the frequency of incoming light rays is less than 9.6 frequency and emitted electrons to the frequency of in hertz of incident light rays okay and that has to be less than 9.6 so v has to be so that little v has to be less than 9.6 times 10 to the fourth so greater than is out greater than is out and then they're saying this thing the incident of light rays which is applying the relationship between the work function and the light source V. Okay, so then the work function is here and the light source 2.46. That was the, oh, shoot, that's not the cave. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, got it. So what they're doing is they're plugging into, this is a complicated question, they're plugging in 2.46 for this K value. And then they're isolating, I believe. Is that right? So then, my, so then it's 2.46. Oh, it's kind of like they're swapping. So it's like you bring this here and then you minus the 2.46 here. So then that, that symbol here equals this minus 2.46, which I believe is B. Oh, my goodness. That's a hard problem. Okay, here we go. Question two. Uh, what is the approximate value of G of F of 5? we got to pick up the pace. Cause, okay, so this is first find F of 5. F is this function. F of 5 is 9. So now they're saying what is G of 9? G of 9, we go here. 9. G of 9 is 7. Boom. Done. Next. Let P of X equal 9X to the 9th minus 3X cubed plus 1X blah, blah, blah. Which is fine is equivalent to, okay, so they're just adding the functions together, combine like terms, so that's 18x to the ninth. Combine these guys, those cancel out, and combine these guys. x to the 1 is the same as x plus 81x. It uh, looks like then they factored. You can factor a 9x out of, oh, they factored a 3x out of both, okay. 3x out of both, that would be 6x to the 8th. This would be 27 6x to the 8th, boom, B is the winner. Done. Yeah. Next. Which of the following equations represents a line in the xy plane with an x-intercept of that and a y-intercept of that? Okay, let's do that. Okay, great. So they gave it to us in very weird format, but that's okay. So I'm going to use my typical thing. I'm going to first calculate the slope. So I'll stack the coordinates like so. Subtract down. I got negative 9 over 15. That's negative divided by three, negative three fifths is the slope. And I got the y-intercept of negative nine, so it's y equals negative three fifths x minus nine. And then they got it in this weird format, so let's roll with it. We're gonna um, we're gonna add three fifths x to this side. Again, this is definitely 
a little bit more. I just don't, you don't see questions like this on the real SAT, but that's okay. So then we got this. And then what do they do? They all equal one. So I'm just going to divide everything by negative nine because that'll give me a one over there. So that divided by negative nine will give me one. Y divided by negative nine is, of course, Y over nine. And then this divided by negative nine is like multiplying it by one ninth, which is negative three forty fifths. And I can divide both by three. And I get negative. Oh, I forgot the Y. And then I get negative one fifteenth X like this. So it should be B negative. Yeah. The other way you could have done is you could have plugged and chug. If I plug in zero and negative nine here, it's true. Plug in negative 15 and zero. Okay, that could have been easy as well. Plug and chug, I just now occurred to me, but that's all good. That's the beauty of the test. Multiple ways uh, to do the problems. Okay, we got eight minutes left. So Joanna Richard volunteered a hospital. Joanne volunteers four hours more per week than Richard does. In a given week, they do not volunteer more than a combined of 16 hours. X is the number that Richard volunteers. Joanne does four more than jo uh, Richard, which inequality best models this relation, this situation. So I can say x plus 4 plus x, the combined two, no more than 16. And this becomes 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to 16. Check it out. They don't even solve. We're good to go. 2x plus 4 is less than 16, less than or equal to 16. Which of the following best describes the solution to the inequality shown above? All right. Let's see. Okay, so let's iso always isolate the absolute value. So multiply both sides by 3, which we get 6 is greater than or equal to 6. Divide by 3, 3x three plus 4 is then greater than or equal to 6. Oh, sorry, greater than or equal to 2, excuse me. Then we split it into two solutions. It's not no solution because that would have only been if it was like, it's. you can't have greater than or equal to be no solution. <clears throat> it's not all real numbers because this oh, that would only be if this was negative. So then we get 3x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 2, and then 3x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 2. 3x is greater than or equal to negative 2. x is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds. And then this one is 3x is less than or equal to, subtract 4 from both sides, negative 6. x is less than or equal to negative 2. So less than or equal to negative 2, greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds. B is the winner. Done. Next. Which of the following is equivalent to this? Okay, this looks like a factoring situation. Again, this is factoring with the star method because it has a, a coefficient in front of the first term. Again, not normally seen on the SAT. These are a little bit harder, but I'm going to use the star method real quick and factor, 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 as I always say. So we got four on the left side. We got four times negative three up here. That's A times negative three, A times C, as I say, and then four on the bottom. What multiplies negative 12 adds to four. That is six and negative two. Reduce like fra fractions. One, two, three. So the top becomes two x, I'm gonna say x. Two x plus three times two x minus one over, and then the bottom, oh man, we don't have a lot of time here. Come on, two, two. Two times negative 15 is negative 30, and then negative seven down here. What well, multiplies the negative 30 adds to negative seven. Three and 10 on negative 10 because it's a negative seven when you add them. This reduces to one. A negative five, that one's cool. So on the bottom, we got two x plus three, and this one x minus five, cancel, cancel. Two x minus one over x minus five, or L, same difference, D is the winner, done. Okay, six minutes left, here we go. What is the value of the expression above? So first of all, the inside, a negative exponent is really one over three squared, and then to the one half, 0.5 is the same as the square root, so this is one ninth, square root of that is one third for the win, Nice. I like these short ones. Amazing. And here we go. In the diagram at left, AB is congruent to BC. Cool. That means they're equal. Nice. Which of the following statements is true? Okay. This is equal to this is equal to, okay. What can we say? Do, do, do. Oh, we can say that BAC is equal to BCA. That's a if sides and angles theorem. So let's see if they have that BAC, BAC, boom, right there. BAC is congruent to BCA. Yeah. Legend. Okay. 10 of 10. How much time do we have? Five minutes. Okay. We're way better on time than I thought. For two capacitors, wired in series, the equivalent capacitine. We expressed into. Okay. This is an isolating quantities question. 
blah, blah, blah. Just basically you're trying to isolate A. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by A plus B equals AB. I'm gonna distribute, distribute. AC plus AB equals AB. What? Oh, I messed up. Whoopsies. That's CB equals AB. Then I'm gonna get the A's together. So I'm gonna subtract AC. So I got CB equals AB minus AC. Then I'm gonna factor out A, B minus C equals CB. And then I'm gonna divide both sides by B minus C, B minus C. A equals CB over B minus C. Boom, C, that's it. I wanna check question one one more time. I have the time, so why not? This one was just so weird. Let me just make sure I read everything correctly. So we had, okay, the above equation relates the kinetic energy and electron volts K. Kinetic energy and electron volts K. So the function electron must have a kinetic energy of at least 2.46, but this has to be greater than, is less than 9.6. So that part makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess, and then at least, yeah, I mean, it should be right. I don't see why not. I'm just trying to see these are flipped. At least less than or equal to greater than or equal to. All right, I'm just going to roll with it. Let's see what we got. It's just so many symbols and craziness. Boom, nailed it. All right, we are done. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for joining. And if you do have any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. And once again, make sure to check out our SAT math video course in the link below. It's legendary. I built it myself with my team. It's the best, trust me. And if you don't like it after a month, you can cancel it, but you know, use it for as long or as little as you like. But we do stand by it and the questions are written by us. So uh, we've been pretty careful with that. So thank you so much. I think you'll love it. I think you're going to have an amazing break. I wish you the best and happiest new year, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.